Y'all remember Barney Fife? Everybody knows Barney Fife. Barney Fife had a trigger finger. Remember that? There was an episode where there was a, a lady that came into town and she was a, a manicurist. And uh, at first nobody wanted to have anything to do with her. But finally Andy went in and got his manicure, you know. And then he wanted everybody else to get one. And he said, Barney, you're getting one. I'm not getting one. You're getting one. Sit down there. So he pushes Barney down and she starts working on his fingers. He said, not this one. That's my trigger finger. <laughs> well, I found out today that this was my trigger finger until your pastor rolled it up in the window of his car. <laughs> so I'm going back wounded for Jesus, but that's okay. I'll be all right. I heard somebody say something this morning about uh, somebody not being able to hear. My wife says, I can't. I'm getting where I can't hear. What is that? Yeah. Anybody ever said that about you? I, I read about this a man and his wife ever getting up in years, and he just knew that his wife could not hear. He knew it. He couldn't prove it to her. So one day he came into the house, and she was sitting watching TV in a chair looking at the television, and he started sneaking up behind her. And he was about, oh, from me to uh, Brother Tim down there, about that distance apart. Can you hear me? No answer. He got a little bit closer to her. Can you hear me? No answer. And he's thinking, see, I knew, I knew she couldn't hear. And on third time, he said, can you hear me? No answer. So by now, he's right up on top of her. And he says, can you hear me? She said, for the fourth time, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Yeah, think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, he was the one that couldn't hear. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. God's people ought to be able to have a good time, isn't it? I believe when we get to heaven, we'll laugh even more. I do. That's what I think. I think that uh, there's a time for seriousness, but I think there's also a time for laughter. Uh, the Bible even makes that kind of clear, doesn't it? Good medicine, how's that go? Like, good, like, like, like a medicine, exactly. And boy, I tell you what, we could use some good medicine from time to time, good one. That's the truth. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about Satan's shortcut. Satan's shortcuts. Satan's shortcuts. So if you've got your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, very familiar passage. I'm sure one that you probably heard preached from on more than one occasion. Uh, I am a Titanic fan. I, I enjoy reading about the Titanic. It's a sad story. It's really a parable. Well, it's become, I think, a parable uh, of, of our world in which we live in. Uh, the Titanic sailed in the days of what was called the Gilded Age, which is a, kind of a golden age. It was when you didn't have to pay income tax. And there were, I read just the other day, matter of fact, I just read this for the first time, there was like 14 or 15 millionaires on the Titanic um, that uh, fateful night in uh, April of 1912. Uh, it's a very, very sad, sad, sad story. Uh, 2,200 people died. 705 um, made it off alive. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a very, 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 very sad story. And um, one that uh, I think people will remember for years and years and years. It seems like it never goes out of style. Eventually, they'll make another movie about it, and we'll move on. And uh, here's something else new that maybe hasn't been seen before, but it is a very, very, very sad, sad story. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. Of course, you know this passage. This is the temptation of Jesus by the devil. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, that's Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the, temp of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. 
and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dost thy foot against a stone. And said Jesus unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. Behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've given us. And thank you for health and strength, Lord, to be able to stand and proclaim your word. And I pray, Father, that, uh, Lord, that you would touch our hearing tonight so that we might not just... Um, Listen, but we might hear what you're saying to our hearts. I pray, that, Father, that you help us. We need help on every hand, and we need the grace and the mercy of God, Lord, to be able to live for you. We cannot do it without you, and we just thank you, Lord, tonight that you promised that you'd be here with us, and you'll grant us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Early in Jesus' ministry, he faced off one-on-one -on -one with the devil. Early, interestingly enough, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Satan knows when, where, and how to attack us. Um, the Bible says that he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But when you boil all three of the temptations that are mentioned here in Matthew's gospel, when you boil them all down, there is a basic temptation here that we all face. And it is the temptation, I call it, of the shortcut. The temptation of the shortcut. The temptation to take the easy way, the soft way, the quick way, and the way of least resistance. Only through Jesus Christ can we resist the temptation to accept Satan's offers. Satan offered Jesus, and he offers us, shortcuts to the, prom to the promises that God has given us. So let me just share with you three of these uh, shortcuts that, that the devil offered Jesus. I think he offers us as well. First of all, I think he offers us the shortcut to satisfaction. The shortcut to satisfaction. All of us want to be satisfied. All of us want what we want. But there's a time and a place for all things. The Bible says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had faced, fasted, excuse me, 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. By the way, you would have been too, amen? That's a long time to go uh, without food. I'm sure Jesus was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Command that these stones be made bread. Hunger is a legitimate need. Can I have an amen on that? It is a very legitimate need. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. The temptation of the shortcut is to satisfy a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. Let me say that again. The temptation of the shortcut is to satisfy a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. For example, money is a legitimate need. All God's people said, amen. But stealing is a shortcut. Education is a legitimate need. But cheating to get grades is a shortcut. Sex is a legitimate need. But sex outside marriage and adultery is a shortcut. We resist the shortcuts by pursuing a higher principle. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Folks, this is what we need. Sometimes we really don't realize it, and sometimes we have to go through some stuff, but at the end of the day, we come back to this. Thank God for His Word. Aren't you glad for Aren't you glad as free will Baptists, let me put in a punch for them here, as free will Baptists, we don't have a per, a per se another book. We have the Bible. And every one of you can have a Bible. And the Bible says that 
We are to hear the men of God, hear the preaching of the word of God, but at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure that what is preached is the truth of the word of God and to plow through it and make sure that what is being said, this is the verifiable word of the living God. And Jesus said, man shall not live simply by bread alone. And we need bread. Can I have an amen? We need bread. Have to have bread. But he doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when, we'll, when we do that, we can understand sometimes that Satan offers us a shortcut to satisfaction. Wait. I hate waiting. I'll be honest with you. I just hate it. I don't even like to go to Walmart anymore. Do you ever go to Walmart and get in, a li- get in, a, get in line and then you eye over and you go, there's a shorter line over there. And so then what you do, has this ever happened to you? Then you run your buggy over there and you feel so good because I'm going to get through here now. And then 10 minutes later, you're still standing there. You look over here and you remember where you were in line over here. And you thought, if I'd have stayed over there, I'd be in the car by now. It's hard to wait. But the safe thing to do is wait on God. Jesus is going, to, is going to be fed. He did not need the devil's help. Because you see, the devil offers shortcuts to satisfaction. Satisfaction will come, but wait on God to give it to you. Don't take it from the devil. Don't take it from him. We need God. We need his word more than anything else in this life. Wait on him. That's a hard thing. I have to, I'm, I'm preaching to me too. Waiting on God and waiting and waiting and waiting for him to move and waiting for him to put things in motion in our lives. So there's the shortcut to satisfaction. There's also a, a shortcut to success. All of us want to be successful. All of us want to be good at whatever it is that we, that we do. And I believe that's okay. But there, are, there can be, the, the devil sometimes offers even a shortcut to success. Look at verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt or test the Lord thy God. Cast yourself down. The angels will catch you. Now he is the son of God. Amen. He's the son of God. And, and I guess if, 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 if it was he needs to jump, I'm sure if the angels need to catch him, they'll catch him. But I don't need the devil telling me that. I don't need to listen to what the devil has to say about it. Jesus knew better than that as well. All of us want some kind of measure of success in this life. It may be in our jobs. It may be in our families. It may be in our hobbies. It may be in our relationships. And that's okay. Jesus would be successful in his mission. The disciples he would train would change the world. He would end up dying for the sins of mankind. By the way, the cross was not plan B. The cross was the plan. There are some that even preach and teach today that things went sideways and Jesus ended up on the cross. No, read Isaiah 53. He was destined for the cross to die for your sin and to die for my sin and die in my place and die in your place. Salvation would be possible for all of mankind. And the devil tried to offer him a shortcut. If you jump down and the angels catch you just as you're falling into the temple, wouldn't that be grand? Everybody will see who you are. They'll know that you're the Son of God. If you'll just jump, they'll catch you. Never presume upon God. Never do that. God moves in His own time and in His own way. Trust in the Lord. The shortcut to success. Satan wanted him to bypass the suffering. If you jump, again the angels will catch you. If it, Listen, Jesus, you don't have to go. Basically what he was trying to do is get him around the cross. If you jump, no betrayal from Judas. If you jump, no mocking, no whipping, no cross, no suffering. Sounds good, doesn't it? Because he knows that's coming to him. 
But he doesn't do it. He doesn't listen to the devil. His success would come. Success in life is a wonderful thing, but it must come in time and it must come in the will of God. God has lessons for us to learn along the way. Lessons that lead to growth and strength. Satan would have you jump ship, take a shortcut that leads to destruction. I see people do it all the time. I don't know how it is around here, but where I'm from, drugs are just about destroying, they're destroying people's lives. And it's like the devil's giving them something and, you know, taking them, to giving them this high, it's temporary and it ends their lives and, and destroys families. One person hooked on methamphetamine and some of the other drugs that now they're taking can destroy just gobs and gobs of people, not just a few people, but extended families are being destroyed because of drugs. Because it's the shortcut to satisfaction, you see, the shortcut to success. When we stand before God and hear these words, and I want to hear these words, don't you? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Think about that. Well done, well done. Stay with me here. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That implies time. That implies a time of being faithful, a time of doing good and doing right. And God will reward us. Don't take the devil's bait. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know where you are, and I don't know what's coming up for you. But the devil, oftentimes, might be a good thing, but he might offer a cheap way to get there. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. Don't listen to the devil. Listen to the word of God. Notice that every time that the devil spoke, Jesus, Jesus came back to him with the word of God. I think it's important enough to know enough of the word of God to be able to quote it back to the devil sometimes and let him know that you know what's true and what's right. And it'll give you strength. It did for him. Wait on the Lord. There's a third thing here, and that is the shortcut to power. The shortcut to power. Look at verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto them, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Which I've always thought that's kind of funny. How can the devil give something that don't belong to him? And I think Jesus is pretty smart. Don't you think? You know, yeah, he is God, right? Yeah. So I figured he knew, knew, he knew the story on that one. Then Jesus said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It's interesting in these uh, comebacks that Jesus has to the devil. He's not really giving him information. He's basically just telling him each time, Shut up. Just shut up. Hush, I don't want to hear it. He does it. By the way, don't ever try arguing with the devil. I don't think any of us are that smart. Don't argue with him. He's won many arguments over the years. He's a professional at it. Don't argue with him. Just answer. Just get away. Just leave me alone. All the kingdoms, he says, I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Satan comes to Jesus with another shortcut, offering him the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus is going to get them. I don't want to give it away here too quick, but he's going to get them. He's going to get them anyway. He doesn't need the devil's help. At the end of the day, Satan wants to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped by you. So I'm not worshipping the devil. You know, the sad part is, either we know the Lord or we don't. Jesus, speaking to the Pharisees, says, you are, of the de- you, are of the, you are of the devil and the lust of your father. You will do. We either belong to God or belong to the devil, so to speak. But at the same time, Satan wants us to worship him. And if he can get Jesus to bow to him, he's getting the creator to bow to the created. And he's not going to do that. Jesus is the creator, the son of the living God. Jesus answers, get away, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Satan picks up on what we want and offers us a way to get there just a little bit faster. If you'll just come and follow me, serve me, I'll get you there quick. Again, the Bible tells us that Jesus will be successful, and he will be victorious without any help. 
proof? Revelation eleven fifteen says this. Now this was written, obviously, after the temptation here, but Jesus knew it was coming. Revelation 11, 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and forever. He's going to win anyway. He's going to have the kingdoms anyway. You remember this morning from Daniel, as we mentioned from Daniel chapter 2, one day that rock is going to come out of the sky and it's going to hit the feet of that of that uh, statue and they're going to be destroyed and it's going to fill the earth and he will rule and reign forever and forever. 2 Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer with him, we also shall reign with him. Wait on him. Wait on God. When my daughter was growing up, when she was getting time, she started dating, and, and before long, it wouldn't but seem like no time at all. She's getting ready to get married. And I remember her telling me one day, she said, Dad, I, I know as Christians that we're supposed to want the Lord to come back. She said, But I sure wish He'd wait till I could get married. I guess that's the way everybody thinks to some degree about certain things. But we need to learn how to wait on God. I, I can't think of anything more important than learning how to wait on the Lord. The scripture says the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all what he's about. You know, if people could, if the curtain could be drawn back and they could see what the devil's really doing, I believe it would change their minds real quick because he is simply a destroyer, a destroyer of lives. And at the end of the day, really, he has nothing on us. Are you listening to me? He really has nothing on us he can just aggravate us to death but he has no power he has no real power over us we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and nobody can take us away from him yes I'm a free will Baptist and I believe you can commit the, uh, the, the sin of apostasy but at the same time I'm trusting in him I'm not looking at that I've got my eyes centered on him and I believe that we can have real faith and trust in Him and know where we're going when we leave this world because of our faith and our trust in Him. Uh, just a couple things here. Satan attacks us when we're weak. There you know that. Satan attacks us. After 40 days, Jesus was hungry. And, and I imagine, by the way, y'all know He had a human body, right? He was weak. You, if you, when, I can't even begin to think about not eating. I can go... Maybe a couple days I might get by with. I don't know. It'd be bad. It'd be real bad. Forty days? I can't even begin to imagine it. By the way, that tells you something about who Jesus was too, doesn't it? He wasn't a weakling per se. I mean, he had to have been a strong man. But Satan knows when we are weak. He knows the buttons to push on you. He knows when to push the button of anger. He knows when to push the button of jealousy, doesn't he? Now oh, you're real quiet. Uh huh. He knows when to push the button of revenge. Well, I'm not saying you necessarily act on it, but you begin to think these things. He knows your hot buttons. Well, he does, whether you realize it or not. He he knows your hot buttons. He knows he knows when to push them, and he knows how hard to push you. Oh my goodness, that's what he does. He wants us to doubt who we are. Notice in that first temptation, he says. Uh, in verse uh, 2 and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward at hunger and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of God by the way you need to know who you are and you need to know where you're going you need to know who you are and where you're going who am I? I am a son or a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ I trusted him by faith and I'm, I'm, I'm resting in that I don't know everything there is to know, but I understand enough to know that I belong to him, and I know that when I leave this world, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with him. I'm not going to be with him because of anything that I've done or ever will do. I'm going there because Jesus has forgiven my sin, and heaven is my home. You need to know that. That's simple, and you need to know that. And if you know that, the devil can't do too much with you. He can aggravate the fire out of you, but he can't really hurt you. Keep your eyes on him. Satan wants us to doubt who we are. I read about a little girl who was in a Sunday school class. 
they were talking and asking different ones in class and said, you know, when the devil knocks at your door, what do you do? And one little boy said, when the devil knocks at my door, I pray. And another little boy said, when the, when the devil knocks on my door, I get my Bible out and start reading it. Another little girl said, well, when, I, when the devil knocks on my door, I, 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 I want to go to church. And this one little girl, they looked at her and she just looked up and smiled and she said, when the devil knocks on my door, I just send Jesus to I just send Jesus to answer the door. That's good. Send Jesus to answer the door, answer the knock. It has no buzz. It has no stain. It's tiny. It's stealthy. And bites in full daylight. If you had on a rubber glove with a one-inch hole in the finger... It can find it. That is the mosquito that causes the Zika virus. It also sounds like a good description of the devil too, doesn't it? Because that's what he does. He comes in silently. He is stealthy. He comes in the full light of day. And like the mosquito, he can find that one place in your life that you're not guarding. Wait on the Lord. Don't give in to the shortcuts that the devil offers. Wait on the Lord. Don't give in to the sh shortcut to satisfaction, the shortcut to success, or the shortcut to power. I want you to read a verse with me. Isaiah chapter 40. Everybody pretty well knows this verse, but I want you to look it up with me. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. I'll give you 3.7 seconds to find that. At least I didn't say turn to uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, or something like that. Because those are real fun to find, especially when you're trying real fast. Everybody there? Book of Isaiah? Are you there? Say amen. amen. Most of you are there. I'll give you another 3.7 seconds. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. I want you to read this with me. Here's our verse. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's what we need to do. And if we'll wait on God, God will fill us and He'll give us the strength for the attacks of the devil. He'll give us the strength to be able to wait on Him. You know what? Over the years, I have watched God do some things. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking when I say it. it's hard for me to wait. It's hard for me to wait on anything. I've always been, I, I can't help it. I'm just like that. I, I'm learning. I'm getting better. But you know, I was watching one day, and I, I, there was a couple people in the church that I was pastoring at the time, and there were a couple people that in the church that were at odds with each other. And I was standing out in the parking lot one day, and I just knew that, you know, that they were going to come together and there was going to be fireworks. And I'll never forget, I was standing in the park and I was going to fix it because we're preachers. That's what we do. We fix things. No, actually what we do sometimes is mess things up. And, and I was standing in the parking lot and I saw these two people walking towards one another. And I, and I, and I heard the Lord just speak to me, turn around and watch me do something here. And I turned around and I watched these two people walk across the parking lot and they started speaking and they were speaking about the issue that I knew about and then I saw them shake hands and hug and God said, what do you think about that? Now I'm going to tell you something. God showed me something right there. Oft times, if I can just wait on Him, He will fix things. Sometimes, now sometimes you have to enter in and you have to do some things. You do. Sometimes that happens. As a pastor, I'm sure Brother Tim knows that. Sometimes you have to do some things. But sometimes if we'll just wait on God, God has a way of orchestrating things and bringing things in the right direction so that hearts can be fixed, hearts can be brought back together. You might be, the Lord, I feel like the Lord's given me this. I don't know. Maybe you're in a relationship or with someone or something's going on and you're thinking this can never be this can never be fixed. This can't this can't be mended. 
pray and wait on God. Pray and wait on God. Maybe you've got a decision that you've got to make. You're not sure what to do. I've been there. Pray and wait. Give God time to do something. One thing I learned about God, he don't get in a hurry. But I've never seen him late. Isn't that interesting? He never gets in a hurry, but I've never seen him late. If I learn to wait on him. I think Jesus was really good at waiting. Really good at waiting. He was so patient with people, wasn't he? I mean, I, it amazes me how patient Jesus was with people. Some of them were crazy people, but he was still patient with them. He was, you remember the, the, the story of the Gadarenes? That cut, the two guys come, well, one writer says there's one. I think another writer says there were two. But anyway, they come running out of the, yeah, come running out of the graveyard. I'm sorry. Coming out, running out of the graveyard. And they come, they come and he comes and he's screaming in Jesus' face. And yet Jesus is patient. God give us that kind of patience. Amen? God give us that kind of compassion. God give us... I, you, you all sang a song, was it tonight or this morning? I want to be more like Jesus. Was that this morning? I believe I want to be more like him too, don't you? Yeah, I want to be more like him. I, I, I want to learn his word so that I might be able to live my life in a way that not only pleases him, but helps other people. I want you to pray this for me, that as I preach, and as Brother Tim preaches, as any preacher preaches the Word of God, we take the Word of God and help people with it. I want to help people with the Word of God more than anything else. Pray that for me. Pray that for all preachers. Pray that for yourselves, that as you're out ministering to people, that God would take, don't argue with people. It wouldn't get you nowhere. Matter of fact, as soon as you start arguing with somebody, the fists go up, spiritually speaking, and you don't get nowhere anyway. The best thing to do is speak in such a way that they understand whatever else happens that fella made me believe that Jesus cares about me that's what you want amen that's what you want father thank you for your word and lord we want to sometimes get in a hurry and take things into our own hands and nearly every time we mess it up forgive us father help us to wait on you help us to learn the patience that you had there, even with the devil, even though you had to set him straight, you patient about it. I'm amazed. I stand amazed, Lord, in the things that you did, in the things that you said. I pray God give us strength. When the devil attacks us, and he will attack us, if nothing else, just to aggravate us and to try to throw us off balance, help us to remember, Lord, that you're with us. Help us to remember that you're standing right there and that when you knock, we just send you to the door to answer. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to live for you. Help us to live our lives for your glory. And Lord, I pray for each one that's here tonight. Lord, I don't know what's going on in their lives. But Lord, I know that people are people and all of us have problems. All of us have situations. I pray, Father, meet the need of their heart. I pray, give them direction. Give them what they need so that this week, Lord, that your will might be done in their lives, Lord, and also the people around them. I pray that you buoy them up in such a way that people say there's something different about him. There's something different about her. And I don't know what they've got, but I want it. God, I pray that we live our lives that way, that people will want the Jesus that we talk about. Lord, I pray bless your people. Help us, Father, to follow after you. In Jesus' name we pray.